Hi guys, I'm Sarah, Sarah Rojas. I am a senior visual media emphasis graduating in December. So when I was putting this together, I couldn't really think of a topic that I could talk about for 15 minutes. So I was thinking about kind of what I learned over and over again through every class, specifically my photo classes, because that's my emphasis. So I was thinking, you know, what do my professors always ingrain in us? Like what's important to a good photo? And what I came up with was, you know, the main three, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO and how with all those they require light and you have to balance them and you have to you know, make sure they're working properly or else your photo is going to be dark and it's, or fuzzy and it's not going to be a good photo. So when I was thinking about thinking how could I translate you know, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to my life personally and what Viola has taught me. So I was thinking, you know, um, you know for, it has taught me you know, the concepts of those three things, but being at Biola has taught me a lot more. I transferred here from Pepperdine after my first semester as a freshman. So when I was at Pepperdine, it was okay. I had really good friends, really great roommates. It was amazing. Beautiful campus, but something just wasn't right. It wasn't clicking. I, I felt a little like distant from everyone else. I was like, why does everyone you know, kind of fit in here so good and I don't? So I transferred to Biola, and I think I kind of came in kind of with like a chip on my shoulder, like I'm just going to get through here as fast as I can, be done with it, and then I'll figure it out later. I'll figure out where I fit in later. So, but being at Biola, they do different here, and <laughs> they had me slow down, and they taught me a lot. So the first thing I taught, they taught me about photography was aperture. So what I learned about aperture is, you know, changing it on your camera changes your depth of field, and it changes the amount of light you let in. So when I was thinking of how I translate that to my life, I was thinking, you know, changing my depth of field with community. I mean, here a lot here, the Biola bubble, and how we need to step out of the Biola bubble, and you know, we need to go beyond and encounter people. And I always thought I did. I was like, I have more friends outside of Biola than I do in, so I'm, I must be doing a good job. Well, I was wrong, and I was taught that through an urban storytelling class. Um, and what we did is every other Saturday, we would go out to different places, um, like the Art District, Olvera Street, um, Chinatown, places like that. And the professor would challenge us to go and not only take a picture of some random people, but to talk to them too. And it was terrifying. <laughs> So what I learned through that class was, so in a camera changing it, it changes the depth of field. In light, it allows us to encounter more people and be in community with them. So an example of this was the picture I took of this man. So our assignment was to go and find someone with an interesting face and take a picture. So I was with another student and we were running out of time and we're like, you know, here's this guy, let's just go and ask him. He was very intimidating looking, like, I, you don't see this person out by Will's campus, you just don't. <laughs> so we went up to him like, hey, we're with Biola, we're photography students, can we take your picture? And he was like, yeah, for $10. So like, okay, never mind, we don't have $10. He's like, I'm just kidding, it's totally fine. So he ended up being a fellow photographer and the nicest guy. He looked, his attitude was like nothing like his looks and that kind of ta taught me, you know, how I judge people based off of what they looked and what I didn't know about them. And I didn't, I didn't want to go up to him at first because you know, it was intimidating, but he ended up showing us all his gear, all his photos. He let us stay for his photo shoot that he was doing. And he's like, if you never need help, you want an internship, you know, email me and you, it's fine, you got it. So he was really great. Um, another one that I have, this was at Olvera Street, and this time we had to go alone and find someone to talk to first and then ask to take their picture. So I was really intimidated. I was just kind of like sitting on the bench next to this man, trying to think of like, see people walking by who could maybe go talk to who weren't so intimidating looking. And then he just turned to me and he started talking. And you know, we started talking about his wife who had passed away and his children and you know his struggles because being in America. And what I kind of learned from that was I'm always trying to find like the common factor to talk to people like, oh, you have a camera, I have a camera, look it. But he really taught me, you know, I don't, there's always that common factor of like humanity. We're all human and we're all connected that way. And I think what that class taught me the most was that we're called to be in community with each other. We're made in God's image and God is in community with Christ and with the Holy Spirit and with us. And to reflect being made in his image, we are called to be in community. And I think that's something when I came to Bible, I was really like I didn't want to accept that. I would just want to kind of do it on my own and then go on. So that class really taught me, you know, to step out of my comfort and to embrace community and not shy away from it. 
And then another thing that Bible has taught me is about shutter speed. And what I learned was that, you know, I always wanted the really like crisp and clear image, and I wanted, um, you know, the image that was the sharpest and the clearest. I didn't like blurred images. I thought, you know, they just kind of look sloppy. So especially with sports, I was really interested in sports photography. But then another professor, he made me go out and take a show slur speed at night and I was terrified because I've never done it. And I was like, it's gonna look horrible and this is pointless. <laughs> so, but he made me do it and then this is what I came up with. And I was like, I don't understand it. It doesn't, it's just, I don't get it. I don't like it. And he's like, it's fine. But then later when I was looking through this picture, putting this portfolio together, I was like, it kind of reflects how I felt sometimes at Bible where you know, I wouldn't stop and slow down. I would just keep going and rush by people and rush by opportunities because I didn't want it to slow me down when in, in reality, slowing down would have been better. It, I think you know, when you have slower things, it allows for more light and that allows for more beauty to come in to your life. And I think that's something that I missed for a long time at Biola and then I finally realized it through a lot of my classes. Um, and that's kind of how I felt for a long time. And I would shy away from you know things that would slow me down. People who would be like, oh, do you want to go here? I'm like, no, I can't. I just got to do this. And it's not that time was going any faster or any slower, but in my mind, it would slow me down. And I think because of that, I missed a lot of opportunities. And But eventually, I learned. So it taught me to see the little things, see the details. And that's another thing photography has taught me is to see details and to pay attention. And this, I'm sad to say, it wasn't my picture but someone else saw it first it was another professor who I was rushing by he's like wait come back look look at this picture look at what you could have captured and you're just walking by and he's like you're always in a rush and I was like well I have things to do he's like but you're missing so much you're missing the beauty around you and you're missing really good opportunities and you know that's really stayed with me since then and I've heard it repeated you know over and over about that um I work at Best Buy and I had to work Black Friday this year it was terrifying <laughs> But the manager, what he said, he's like, I know it's a hectic time, and I know, you know you're going to get angry customers and people who are yelling and maybe throwing things at you. And he's like, but I want you to step back when you're stressed and just take a step back and slow down. He's like, I know it seems counterproductive, but it's going to do wonders. And it did. I, you know, I finally embraced, you know, slowing down is sometimes better because you see the details. You see, you know, when I slowed down when I was working, I saw that, you know, not only was I stressed, but the people around me are stressed too, so trying to rush them through too isn't going to do anything. It's just going to make us more stressed. So that has really taught me something specifically through photography. You know, slowing down sometimes gives better images, and slowing down in life, you know, you see the details more. You see the people around you, and you see their light. And then the last thing that you know I saw. This is another example of you know slowing down, seeing the people around you, seeing you know, the people who are there every day playing on the side of the street and just, he was there every day playing and he was just like so happy. So, and he kind of to me represents like someone who has slowed down and accepted things as they come instead of rushing by. Then lastly is ISO. When I think of ISO, I think of, you know, sensitivity to light. So when you lower your sensor, you get, you know, it's, less, it's more sensitive to light when it's higher. No, when it's higher, it's more sensitive. When it's lower, it's less. So I think of that in life. So I think of changing your sensitivity to light in life. It changes your sensitivity to the light that God has provided you with already. And that's something that I missed for a while. So you know, a bad ISO leads to darkness. And I think a bad like ISO in life is being hardened to the light and not recognizing when it's around you. And that's some things that I miss. So I miss the people at Biola who have always been so welcoming and people who would to talk to me or I'd see them and would make eye contact and I'd look down and they'd just keep walking and finally it took after a while and they would stop and they'd be like hey how are you and they would stop me and I'm like wow you know they're not as intimidating as I thought they were they're they're the best people I have met here so she's kind of representative of that she's always someone who will stop me and be like how are you how are you doing so another person is family she's my younger cousin and I swear, I watched her grow up for forever, and I, it just hit me the other day that she's grown up now. She's graduating from high school. And I was like, Maddie, you were like three yesterday. And she's like, well, I see you all the time. And I was like, I've missed that. I've missed her growing up because I've missed her light that she's been surrounding me with. I would say hi, and then I'd go back to my other cousins. 
But now that I've slowed down and I've become, you know, more susceptible to light, I've noticed that God has provided me with so much light in my life and that he surrounds me with so many opportunities to embrace people and to lean on their light in my dark times. So that's what kind of taught me, um, you know, the lighting seminar that I'm in now, it taught me that um, sometimes you don't, you can't find natural light and you have to make your own. And that's something I've always been intimidated with. I've never used flashes or anything, one, because I couldn't afford them, and two, because I just didn't know how to use them. So I never went. And, you know, this seminar that I had been in, it had taught me that, you know, you have to sometimes go out and find light. It's always around you. But if you can't find it, there's always a way that you can make your own light. And I think another way that I learned to make my own light was to, to turn towards Christ and to look to him, because he's always shining there. So... And these are my friends. The one in the purple and the flower is my best friend, Christy. I've known her for like nine years now. And for a while, we weren't close our freshman year of college. We didn't talk for a while. And I'd help, uh, you know, when I was really upset or something, I'd be like, oh, maybe I'll text her. But then I wouldn't because my phone wants to hear about that. But then I finally did, and she was like, I'm having the same problems. So I realized, you know, that she had always been that light that was there that I just wasn't open to, that I never really got to know because I didn't take the time to. I was too hardened towards it. So, and this is my cousin again. And she has become one of my favorite cousins, and I can say that because I have a lot of cousins. So you pick favorites. And <laughs> so she's a dancer, and I'm so proud of her. She is just such a bright light in my life. She's so kind, and she's so open to everything. And so I just love her so much. And then lastly, so it's kind of hard to read, but it says, I loved you at your darkest. And I saw this saying somewhere, and I was like, that just like really touched me because when I was thinking about it, I was like, not only has Christ loved me when I have been shining my brightest, but he was there at my darkest when I didn't see him. And that's something that Biola has really taught me, was to really look for Christ in that time of darkness instead of just trying to do it on your own because he will always be there and he loves everyone at their darkest. So... And he's there, so you, he's there for you, which is kind of what I struggled with in the beginning at Pepper. I think if I didn't lean on him, I tried to lean on myself, and because of that, I failed. So being at Biola has definitely taught me that. It has taught me that, you know, in the darkest of times, there's always that light. You just have to find it, and you have to be open to it, and you have to be willing to slow down. So that's what it has taught me. So. In conclusion, I have learned at Biola to slow down and to open my depth of field, to embrace community, and to embrace others that I don't know, and to be open to the light that is around me. And, you know, it has taught me, my lighting seminar has taught me to, you know, create light when I can be found, and it, it's applied to, you know, in, in loneliness times or in hopeless times that there's always going to be someone there that God has provided you with. You just have to search for them. So my challenge for you is to think about kind of switching from the automatic mode, which was the title of some automatics manual. And what I realized through putting this together was that I had been living in an automatic mode where, you know, I was living based on how I think people, I thought people saw me instead of how they really did. And from switching from automatic to manual, it kind of showed me that I can take control of my own actions and my own kind of my own path while still keeping God's light in front of me to guide me. And that has showed me that, um, you know, I don't need to try to lean on myself as much and that there are people around me who are always there. So finally, Aperture shows me that changing the aperture on a camera changes the amount of light let in and it changes the depth of field. And in life, changing the depth of field better under it, it helps someone better understand the people around them and their perception of light. And for shutter speed, changing the shutter speed on a camera changes the amount of time the light is let in. And in life, slowing down, letting more light in, even with the chaos around us, leads us to slow down and to see the more beautiful moments around us. And for ISO, changing the ISO on a camera changes the sensor's sensitivity to light. And in life, changing our sensitivity to light allows us to connect with one another more and appreciate the light more when we have it. So I challenge you guys to, to 
try to evaluate your life and see if you're living more in automatic or in manual. And if you are living automatic, I challenge you to maybe take it one step at a time. Change your depth of field slowly, you know, encounter more. <laughs> Sorry. You know, encounter more people that you're usually uncomfortable with, even if it's around Biola, because that's how it started for me, was, you know, encountering people I didn't really know. And it turns out that Biola is one of the friendliest campuses I've ever been to. And I have a lot of friends who will come here and they'll visit and be like, why is everyone saying hi to me? Why are people holding doors when I'm like 10 feet away still? So <laughs> I'm like, they're just friendly. That's just who they are. And it's, it's kind of what Biola is known for is being different. And that's what Biola has really taught me is to be different and to let like my light shine through and embrace others and not to just ignore it. Because I know, I'm sure there's people here who like went through what I did when I was at Pepperdine and feeling lonely and feeling out of place. And so sort of recognizing that and understanding that, you know, they just need someone to see their light and kind of embrace it and empower them at the same time. So yeah, that is my challenge is to go from automatic to manual. <laughs>